hello everyone this is Manoj welcome back to my youtube channel in today's video I'll discuss and talk about how we can use Microsoft identity feature and how we can use the register and login inbuilt features of identity and also with that how we can create any CRUD operation let's say for any user for any employee for any other module all right so uh, let me quickly show you so this is the existing uh, project so if I click on register so let me do it test user at gmail.com and password is test user at one two three test user at one two three register so it is going to register this particular employee test user at gmail.com so now you see here it is telling register confirmation because I haven't added that email functionality so we have to manually confirm it so click here thank you for confirming your email so go to login and I guess test user at gmail.com test user at 123 login yes we logged it so now if you see here this is my uh, uh, logged in email ID if I click on it so it displays the complete my profile if I want I can also uh, uh, update my phone number let me quickly show you so this is the new number click on save so profile has been updated if I again go back to let's say manage employee and if I click back to my profile so I can see my updated number all right so now this is not in the scope but I'm just showing you so let's go back to our home so here if you see uh, I have done the registration and login now this is the manage employee so here let's say if you want to create any new employee so let me quickly give mark mark at gmail.com phone number save so details has been saved if I want to add it I can also add it this one my mark let's say 25252563 save so you see I am able to add I'm able to add it and if I click on delete so I'm also able to delete so this is the complete functionality which we are going to create in this particular uh, video so let me quickly log out and close this browser and also let me close this visual studio let's create a new project with the studio 2022 here click on a new project and here the moment you click on this project so it will ask you to select any or choose any particular type so from here we have to select asp.net core web app model view controller so click on this or if you want you can search from this template list all right so both uh, things will work for the same so click on it and click on next now it will ask you uh, to give any meaningful name so let me give demo identity 4 and let me select any particular location if you want you can also select and click on next now make sure uh, you will uh, leave the latest dotnet framework with which is 8.0 and from authentication type click individual accounts now click on create so it will create the new project for us and we have to do uh, some little uh, customizations within this particular project if you see uh, this is the newly created project and if you see the uh, solution explorer so these are the default file and folder structure so the first thing is let's go to the app settings dot json so if you see uh, we got the default uh, connection string all right if you want you can leave it as it is but uh, if you see here so I have to log in this particular server separately so if I open my uh, SQL server so this is my server name so let me connect this one and let's update here save so let me close this app settings now 
we have to install some packages so let's open the package manager tool so click on manage NuGet packages and from the browse or well, let's see what are the default installed packages for this particular project so we got ASP.NET framework framework core UI you can see these are the packages which we got okay so let's close this we don't need to install any additional package whatever we need those are already installed now go to tools you get package manager package manager console now let's run our migration so that uh, we uh, get our uh, initial tables uh, in the SQL server so let's run the migration so add migration let's say initial run and once this uh, command gets uh, successfully executed then we have to run another command which is update database that will execute this particular script which will be created by this particular command and after that we can also verify the database within the SQL server all right so if you see uh, this command is in progress now another command is update database so this will create the database in the SQL so build started build succeeded You see the script is being executed done so our database is created if you want you can go here and let me quickly refresh meanwhile it will open the database list let me quickly go our models folder and let's create a folder called sorry not folder a class employee and in this let's add some properties so the shortcut is prop another property would be a type of string name let me quickly copy this email and the last one let's say phone all right now here let's create a DB if you see here we have application DB context already so now let's add the DB set for this particular class which we just added so here after this public application this one so let's add public db set the class is employee employees get set save so our db context is done we have added the model also which is employee now the next step is let's go to our controllers and let's add another controller empty controller and let's give name employee save so let's try to build this project so that uh, we can see if there is any error or exception no build succeeded and let's try to uh, first let's go to the SQL and quickly verify the database the database name is ASP.NET demo identity this one so ASP.NET demo identity uh, 804b9 804 this is the database let's expand this so here we'll see some tables so it is taking some time to expand the tables let's go back to the Visual Studio okay let's try to run it we'll see how 
uh, this application looks. Yeah, it's running. Perfect. So let's try to register. Just test at gmail.com test at one two three test at one two three click on register if you see the same message we are getting as I shown you earlier so let's quickly verify manually so the thank you for confirming your email all right now let's try to log in click on login test at the rate gmail.com password is test at one two three login perfect we are able to log in also if you see this is my email id let's click on it so you are also getting your profile details email password all right from here you can also change your password if you want you can add any app for that you need to create a separate app then you had need to uh, uh, implement or you can add here personal data so this is uh, something else we don't need to download or delete let me click on download let's see what it gives okay personal data maybe it is my personal details let's open this file okay this is the complete details of my account within JSON format all right let me and okay let's go back to our home and this is the uh, welcome uh, you can say this is the dashboard page all right so the registration and login both are working all right let me quickly log out and close this now let me also close this one now we added one empty controller so here we have to create all CRUD operations for uh, the particular employee class all right but before that let's quickly go to the program.cs file and here let me show you uh, we have some uh, pre-added information if you see here so this is uh, you know injecting the DB context over here and this is injecting the identity user using this uh, we are able to you know uh, register and we are able to log in within the system all right let's go back to our employee controller now the first thing is we have to inject our application DB context in our uh, we can say uh, the uh, constructor so there is a shortcut for constructor CTOR hit tab you will get a constructor over here private read only application db context context and here let's inject this one application db context context is equal to context so we have successfully injected our db context for this particular class now First of all, let's create the index method. All right. So the public sync task action result index. Within this, let's return a view. And with this, context dot employees dot to list async let me remove this one save so basically when we render this particular view so it will go to our database using entity framework and it will fetch all the employee details and it will render over here all right now another one is we have to create a 
let me quickly add here so we have to create uh, our create view we have to add one added view delete and this is for the list all right so now let's add all these uh, uh, api methods quickly so if you see i have added uh, all these methods so this is for the create which i created and this is for creating a new employee so it will take id name email phone uh, from the front end and it will this is the model which also have the same properties and it will take the details and it will add and it will again return the same view similarly to add it any particular employee we need a unique id so we are taking this id from the ui and and we are taking that particular employee and we are once we get this particular employee let's say this id uh, is not available then it will uh, say or it will return not found but if this id uh, uh, exists in the database then we will return the particular employee similarly for this added this added is to get the particular employee details but this is for the updating right this is uh, responsible for the modify the details so once uh, when you uh, when we go to this add it and when we click on the submit button then this particular action method will be executed and uh, these details again user have to submit from the front end and here it uh, when this particular end gets executed so these details will be updated in the database we'll see uh, all this in action and this is to delete again similar to get any particular employee in add it we need a unique id for delete also we need a unique id again it is checking if id is not uh, id is null then not found if not if the same employee uh, exist then it will delete or not if it is not exist then it say not found similarly this is uh, this uh, particular uh, action method will open the delete view when we when you click on the delete button on this particular view then this action method uh, will get uh, executed and it will take the id and it removes the particular employee from the database okay this is a private method just to check uh, any employee exists in the database or not all right so these are the you know, action methods now for each action method we have to create a view so let's quickly create view so add view so empty so make sure you give the same uh, view name so this is for create now let's add one for add it So here we need to give any view name for added. One for delete. And we need We need one for index all right now we have to add details in this so let's say for creating a new employee we need to add them a uh, model so let me add all views uh, HTML quickly So if you see i have added all the respective html this is for the create uh, this is for the index view and this is for delete and this is for added if you see this is pretty uh, straightforward code we have included uh, the model so this is the list and using a html table we are you we are using for each loop and we are displaying the data within a table including two buttons edit and delete so 
uh, this edit will trigger edit action method and this delete will trigger delete action method of this employee controller all right now so this is uh, for the view now we have to modify a little bit our uh, layout so let's go to the layout and here we have to add a new ally just to fire our uh, this employee so the controller should be employee and action method is index let's give manage employee save so this will add a new nav bar in our system uh, let's go to login dot here yeah we already have this logout button here so no need to add any additional code in this login dot partial so let's save and let's quickly build this let's see if there is any error no build succeeded all right let's try to run this now we'll see if we get this uh, manage employee uh, within our application so it is running So let's try to log in with the same employee. So test at gmail.com. Test at one, two, three. Login. Okay. So the manage employee is there. Let's click on it. Okay. There are pending model changes in application DB context run migration. Okay, why is this? We have to run our migration again because we just added our model and other thing, but we haven't run the migration. Meaning, if you see here, we don't have any employee table. All right, so this is just to show you again. Go back to our NuGet package manager, package manager console. Now let's add another migration added employee module so this will create the script for our newly added employee module so if you see it is created the script and run the command update database so it will update the database and after that we can see this employee table in our database so if i come here let's refresh this so we'll see the employee table so if you see this is the employee table which was not there in earlier okay all right now let's try to run this okay so manage employee create new mark mark at gmail.com save so details have been added let's quickly add one more let's say virat virat only at gmail.com phone number so we have two employees let's click let's try to add it so let's add last name also so details are added and if i try to delete let's try to delete perfect now the only thing is if you see without login we should not uh, expose this manage employee to our front end uh, users all right so how we can authenticate this so for that we have to go our let me uh, stop this first let's go to our layout where we have our nav bar and if you see here on this manage employee we have to wrap this uh, within this 
uh, user dot identity dot is authenticated all right so at the rate if user dot identity not identities identity dot is authenticated then only we have to add this so save now try to run it so now if user is authenticated and logged in then only a user will see this marriage employee uh, link otherwise not so we'll see this in action so let's log in so see uh, it is not uh, uh, appearing here so let's try to log in first uh, test at gmail.com sorry test at one two three login yeah the moment we logged in so you can see this manage employee so he, from here you can do it again test mark test mark at gmail.com any phone number save if you want you can also add it and if you want you can also delete so everything is working fine and the moment you click on log out so the link has been disappeared because now user is not authenticated all right so uh, this is all about uh, this particular identity video so i have seen like there were so many comments on my identity videos like people who are not um, uh, getting things in right way so i'll also um, upload this particular code one in one of my uh, github repositories and i'll share the github repository link in my channel description all right so this is about this video but let's say uh, if you are working on any uh, college assignment or if you are working on any on any your office uh, project and you are facing any difficulties related to dot net dot net core api sql mysql react js javascript css all right so uh, i do uh, provide technical support so you can contact with me and you can find my contact details from my youtube channel so uh, there is my whatsapp number you can uh, connect me uh, one on one and you can also find my instagram uh, uh, handle you can also ping me there and we can connect and help each other all right so uh, this is about today's video i hope you like it if you did so hit the like button share comment and if you are new to my channel so please subscribe i uh, need your help and support so i'll soon i'll see you in the next one thanks for watching take care bye bye